So you can see here that, that there are a lot of databases included in App Lab, but what I want to show you how to do is to make your own data set, uh, like you see here with names and scores or whatever information you want to save. And we're going to base that on user input. So for example, if JT gets a score of 17, and you submit it, that will automatically be added to this database over here. And the great thing about this is you could send this link to as many people as you wanted to, and data could be added by lots of different people. Let's just delete all this data so you can see it coming in fresh again. If Wallace gets a score of 22 and you hit submit, you can see it automatically pops up over here. We'll do one more. Maybe Porsche gets a score of 99, just like that. So let me show you how to make this from scratch. We'll hit create in App Lab and we'll start as we normally do in the design tab. So the first thing we'll need is a button. We're going to give it a unique ID. I normally call them submit.btn. And then I just make the font big enough to see and change the color appropriately. Oh, look, I got my ID and my text mixed up. So let me flip those around. There we go, that looks better. Okay, my button's done. The next thing I need to do is have two different input fields. One of them is going to be for the name, and the other is going to be for the score. I'll call this one name underscore input, and I'll just put type here for the placeholder, type name, and then I'm going to duplicate that one so that they'll be the exact same size, and then just change it to score underscore input. And here in the placeholder, I'll put type score. Then I'm just going to fill up some empty space with some instructions up here. This is just a label. I'm not going to do anything with it, so I'll leave the ID alone. And I'll just put enter your, enter your score into the database, and I'll resize that to make it fit. Okay, I think we're done with the design. Now it's time to set up our table. Now let's just take a peek in here and look at what a database might look like with lots of data. That one was on cats, but we're just going to make our own. and It's going to have just a little bit of data in it. I'm going to call it score list. And I'm not going to add any names in here, but I am going to add the columns. So the first column will be name, and the second column will be score. And that's it for databases. Next, I want to make things happen whenever the button is clicked. So I'll say, on event, submit button click, make two variables. They're going to be called their name and their score. Those are going to hold whatever the user types into these two blanks. And to get those values, I need to use a get property in each one of them. Here it is. So I'm going to get a property from each input field, one from the name input and one from the score input. In both cases, I need to get the value. All right, and just to check that that's working, I'm going to console log it. So I'll backspace these quotes out, and I'll put their name plus... And then here I'm going to put some spaces and a colon in quotes just to divide their name and their score plus their score. And let me capitalize that. And now let's try it out. So I'll type John, give it a score of, say, 22. Click Submit. Oh, I got an error. Let's see what I did. Oh, I forgot to capitalize the N so that it matches my variable exactly. Okay, let's try it again. John and... 22, submit, and now you'll see down here in the console log, John at 22 pops up. So I know those variables are working properly. Next, we need to actually write to this data set and enter the name and the value there. So I'll go under data and find create record. And now here in this first blank, I need to put the name of the database or the table that I created. It is right here. I called mine score list with a capital L. And then the first value is already named, but we're going to take Alice off of here and just put the variable their name. So that'll add their name to the database. And then I need to add another thing inside these curly brackets. So I'll put a comma. And my next column is called score. The value that I'm going to put into that column is going to be called their score. All right. That looks good. And then uh, I don't need this record because I don't have any anything I need to do there. Okay, uh, let's check it and see if it works. Again, we'll put, uh, let's try the name Peter, and we'll give it a number of 22. Submit, and let's check our table. And there it is. So that part's working. Notice how the score has quotation marks around it. That means the score is actually a string, which may be a problem later on when we're comparing. 
So what we're going to do is use the number method, like this, to convert that value to a number before it goes into our database. So it's just capital N number and then put the value in parentheses, and now you can see that when it enters it into the database, these quotations are, are gone, and it's treating it like an actual number value. The last thing we need to do is, after we've submitted, we would like the name and the score on our input fields to disappear so that it will be ready to receive the next input. So for that, we'll just set each property to an empty quotes. So we'll give Rick a value of 10, and when you click Submit, he'll go away. Let's add two or three here just really quickly so you can see the database populating, and you can see those boxes emptying themselves after the values are placed in. All right, this will be the last one. Let's give him a decimal value just to see how it pops up. All right, and now all of those values are added into our database. The limit of a database, I think, is about 20,000.